Hello guys, welcome back to the bench. And today we got this one lonely little jar of paint. Uh, have you seen from my picture in the community section? I obtained a 50 year old jar of testers paint. This green, uh, metallic green, 1154. And um, I was curious because the lid came right off. Not struggled at all. I didn't need a plier. And it came from a little case, a case of six or 12. And uh, I got to give a shout out right now to Chuck at Appanog Hobby Shop here, where I live uh, in Rhode Island. It's just a couple miles from my house. And um, he knows what I do here on the channel. And he says, I have something for you. And uh, he gave me this. And I was thrilled to uh, test it out. Now, uh, 19 cents is stamped on the lid. And I think it's the first time they put the price on the lid. Let's take a peek at this first. So yeah, real good looking green too. Now this is back in the day. Um, now we have all these warning labels. I, you can't even see the color. <laughs> you gotta do, go upside down to see what color you got. Look at this. I mean, that's the name of the color right here. I have to put on my magnifiers to read what color it is. But uh, a little more in the uh, simpler age. Uh, metallic green, how many ounces? You know, it's an enamel, and the price is on the top, and that was it. So um, I figured I was curious, and we're going to test it out. We're going to airbrush this stuff and see how it holds up, if how it dries, and um, see how a 50-year-old jar of paint holds up all these years. Now, we're going to compare it to its brand-new counterpart. Uh, let me get the case out here. This is my, let's back this up a little bit. Let's move the badger out of the way. Mr. New out of the way. Here we go. All right, let's pull this out a little bit. There we go. All right. There we go. This is one of my cases I use for testers. And uh, here's my testers down here. These are my uh, Revels up here. The Revels, they come in those tins like, uh, hold on one second. Like these here. Sorry, I'm not for microphone. These humbles, they come in the same thing. They came in these tins. I'm going to do the same uh, for these humbles, too. I'm going to open them up and uh, pour them into these uh, square jars that I get from Tamiya. Going off on a little bit of a tangent here. See them? I buy them by the case. The label comes right off. And they have a label that says Tamiya on them, but you can take the label right off. And that's what I did here. And then what I did was I printed my own labels. I got the Ravel logo, and I put the name... And number of the paint. And uh, look at that. Much better than that tin. And I'll just flip them here upside down. Into this beautiful case. This is a large case. I'll show you the small one. I'll, I'll put up a link um, for the case. It's great for collecting these. And these are so cheap. They're still two bucks, which is cheap. And um, every time I go, I keep a list. And I'm trying to complete the set, so to speak. But anyway, that is my collection right there of testers. Most of them anyway. And here is metallic green. Now, it's a different number. This is 11.30. This was 11.54. Here's the price, $1.99. So there's your difference right there, too. But this one looks much lighter, hence probably the color change. I mean, the number change. Look at the difference. But this is the only metallic green that they sell today. So we're still going to airbrush it just to compare and uh, see if there's any difference at all, tackiness or whatever else I'm going to test. So we're going to steer both of these up quite well. And uh, see how they go. So, let's get this out of the way. Great case. That's the large case, by the way. Hold on, guys. Let me show you the small one while we're on that. This is the smaller one. This holds 30. And um, it comes with these uh, foam squares. You can take them out. You can actually cut the square if you want it to lift it up higher. But no need here. These are my Tamiya's. I'm going to stop putting the Tamiya's. Tamiya's smart. They made the, they made the uh, cap the color of the paint. So I don't have to flip them upside down like the testers. So uh, there we go. So I got I got about 32. So this will hold just about the whole collection of Tamiya paints that I have. You just got to take these foam squares out. And then uh, up here I put a few spoons for samples for uh, when I test them so everything stays together. So I'll put the link for both of these up there. Uh, I think I got them both on Amazon, I believe. I think this one came from Etsy, but it's the same guy who was on Amazon. But I'll put up the links uh, for both of these. Uh, anyway, 
we're going to be testing these. So here we go. We're going to use my uh, Badger Patriot 105. Here's a cup. Here's two cups. All right. Oh, my thinner fell over. We're going to use my brand new Mecha Empire Air Force thinner. This is a leveling thinner. Very similar to Mr. Color. If you don't have mine yet, it just came out actually. I don't even know if it's on the website yet. Um, Mr. Leveling thinner works beautiful for these uh, testers paints. But let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. And uh, pop it open. Like I said, I had no trouble opening it when I got it. I was afraid that it was so easy to open, it was going to give me trouble. But here's, here's what we got. <laughs> Try to get this thing close up. See it? That's not too bad. And the paint in there is almost right to the top. But I could see a lot of the silver. See it? The metallic, or the pearl, whatever they use there, isn't quite mixed as well as it should be. But let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. Yeah, there's no chunkies at the bottom at all. I put this on my paint shaker quick, but I knew it's going to need a heavy steering because of the, the silver on the sides. So I'm just scraping the sides there and getting it all off. Oh, it's blended pretty good. It's blended good. I don't see any trouble here at all. There we go. Look at that. All right, let's look at the new one. Keep our 19 cent cap with that one. This one has just the plain old cap. By the way, 19 cents was the first price increase. Um, they were 10 cents when they came out, I think in 65, mid, mid 60s, 10 cents across the board. This is, I think, 71 when they put the price to 19 cents and um, they stamped it on the lid of all of them. This is their first price increase. And then not too long after that, when inflation really hit, um, in the Carter era, I, I believe it went up again, and I think Pactra, I think Pactra owned them or distributed them. They had a, a sticker shaped like a half a moon, and it went over this with a 24 cent. I think it went up 5 cents or 10 cents, something right over this, and they went up again. But this is the first price increase. Now, again, this is not, uh, I don't think this is going to be the same color, but it could be. It could fool me here. Let's see what we get. This is the brand new one. I picked up yesterday. It's the one color I didn't have in my collection. So I ran out and grabbed it quick. Hobby Lobby actually had it. Oh, it's, you know what? It's kind of close. It does look a little darker. Yeah, it's definitely a little darker. Oh my god. Spilled a little on the side hand. You want to keep the edges and the top of the lid very clean. Very important. That's how you keep a long-term seal on this stuff. And uh, it's actually best to store them upside down. I'll go over that at the end of the review here. Yeah, it's a little lighter. doesn't look it on camera as much, but in person it's much lighter. Yeah, you can probably see it there. But uh, there we go. Now we're going to thin these out. You can go pretty much 50-50 with these. Let me get a pipette here. All right. Don't have to go too thin. This is a 0.5 um, needle. So you can push, you know, really a uh, good amount of paint out of that. Don't need a ton. We're going to test it on just a couple spoons just to get the results. Yeah, that should do it. Okay, once again, keep a rag by your desk. Always wipe the top or the threads and you won't have a problem. All right. That's that. Let's thin it. Here we go. I know I'm not counting here. I've been doing this so long. I can just tell by eye. You guys probably after a few weeks of doing this, you should end up the same way. And there it is. You can see the consistency. It's that skim milk. Just shake it. If you drag it up the side, you're going to leave a trail of pigments. That's it. And uh, this looks like it should work. Now, who knows? It might not dry at all. We're going to find out. So let's go ahead and get the new one. Let's go across the bottom like I'm doing here. Scrape it so you get all the metallic. And then same thing, just a few bits off of the uh, coffee stirrer. That looks, oh yeah, it's definitely darker, guys. It's definitely a much darker paint. All right. Oops. Look at this. 
Don't do that. The 19 cent cap got to go on the 19 cent bottle. Even though I probably could tell at this point because of the how much darker it is. It's too bad. I wish I was hoping it was the same exact color, but I guess colors change over the years. And they must probably go with what the times dictate also sometimes. Colors, just like house colors and uh, rooms. You don't see lime green uh, bathrooms anymore in the old days. Just colors just fade out of popularity, you know. Anyway, there it is. They're both mixed and they're both ready to go. I used my Air Force thinner, but I but it's the same attributes as a Mr. Leveling thinner. So use either one of those. I highly recommend. And um, we're going to wash out the uh, airbrush with, hold on, I'll show you. We're just going to flush this right through the airbrush. This is a uh, stuff I got from Home Depot. Basic hardware store stuff. And um, that's it. I think we'll start with the new one, and then we'll see it how it compares to the old one. We're going to go in reverse, new to old. All right, let's head over to the booth. We'll take the Badger with us, and we'll see how this stuff works. All right, guys, here we go at the booth. I poured it in. We're going to start with the new one first. I realize there's, like, no personality to this jar. It's just a bunch of warning labels. At least the old one said testers on the front. Uh, I don't know. Should we put it over uh, primer? I don't know. Let's try it over some primer first. This is set to... Uh, 15 PSI. These gloss enamels, they go on beautiful. They just they just airbrush beautifully. Look at that. They dry just like this, like it's wet still. I guess that's it. Wow, that's beautiful. Uh, I don't know. Let's try it over. Um, let's try it over bare plastic. I know it's going to come out a lot lighter, but it's a good way of achieving, like I said, two different colors from the same jar. I'm only putting more coats just so I'm trying to get it to that same color level. Wow, it goes on great. Still a great paint. Let's load up this a little bit more. I find sometimes the primer dulls it out a little bit if it's a dull primer like that is, semi-gloss. But not bad. Beautiful. Well, we know that was going to work anyway. Let's go put this in the dehydrator. I'll come back, and we're going to try the 50-year-old one. All right, fight fans, here we go. There we go. The 50-year-old 19-cent jar of testers. Much nicer. More personality on the jar. I might even replace those other new jars with the square Tamiya ones, and I might make my own labels to look like this classic label. I think I'm going to do that. Anyway, I just emptied it in here. A few drops left. All right. Same type of spoon, same primer. This is a tester's primer, by the way. Let's see what we got. Yeah, this is a much lighter green. It's almost a silvery green. But you know what? It's spraying. Beautiful green, though. I have a feeling it's going to come out pretty light, though, in the uh, on the white spoon. Look at this. Can we go back in time for 19 cents and buy the whole lineup? Anybody out there with a time machine? Leave the comments below if you uh, 
If you guys out there, somebody has a time machine. Here we go. Plain white plastic spoon. That's been impossible to get. These soup spoons have been out of stock at, uh, t at Walmart for two months. I had to buy these on Amazon. I mean, I like the regular... This is your regular spoon, but it's just got more surface area to work with when you get a soup spoon. I'm particular about my spoons. Well, you know what? This looks great. It's not the quite... Well, you know what? If you look at it, it almost is that color. It's very silvery. Uh, where it settles, that's for sure. But I don't think any more coats is going to change this at all. And this is over a dark gray primer. And that's over the white spoon. So I think this is what we're getting. Let's try something before we uh, end this. Let's try it over uh, some matte black. I mean, uh, gloss black base. Let's see what we get. You see, the silver really shows through above the green. There we go. Three shades over three different bases. Really nice. All right, let me go put this in the dehydrator with the other one, and I'll meet you back at the bench, and we'll go over the results over the 50 year old bottle of paint. All right guys, back at the bench with the results and they're quite good. Um, literally no difference 50 years old to yesterday. Um, here it is over the primer. I mean, beautiful. It is a different green, but I could tell right away it was a different green. You could just tell this has more of a gold flake in it, the new one. This actually has, you can see, a silver flake in it. Hold on, we'll hold them up together. Look, I mean, it was quite different. You know, I just, that was metallic green 50 years ago. Today it's that. There's nothing I could do about that. I just wanted to check the performance. It happens to be a color I do like quite a bit. That's over the primer. It's smooth. It dried. I didn't think it was going to dry. It already dried in the, in the uh, dehydrator. Uh, for the record, guys, it's five minutes, maybe total, since you saw me at the booth to, right now. I threw it in the... Uh, dehydrator cleaned up the airbrush and came back and grabbed it out of the dehydrator and it's it's dry so this is it over the plain white spoon obviously a difference over gray look at that and this was it over black really pretty color over black so there's all three black gray white and it works but the best bang for your buck i'm guessing it's an enamel because they last forever that's probably because of the oils don't really evaporate. Now here we go with the new one. That was over the primer. We'll compare the two. Quite different. Same thing. Nice and smooth. They both dried. And this is it over white. And here it is over white. More closer there. But in person, it's quite different. Uh, camera adds, uh, makes them almost look the same, but they're not. So... There you go. All the excitement. I wanted to test it, but uh, not to say anticlimactic, but it just worked. I, I just I knew these paints uh, really hold up well. The enamels really do hold up in the long run, particularly if you clean off your jars and you've got to store them. I would say upside down. They've come recommended, even from the company. I recall years ago, they say if you store them upside down, what happens is the paint settles here. It causes um, a seal around the cap area, and air can't get in. Whereas it sits here, the paint sits right about here, you know, depending from when you first get it. Then, of course, it drops as you're painting it. So you've got a big gap of air in here, and that's where the air seeps into the area. So if you store them up, you've got to make sure they're really wiped clean. Um, but as a precaution, if you store them upside down, in that case like I showed you, um, I believe the paint causes a full air seal down here, and air can't get in, and uh, the paint actually causes its own seal making it airtight and then when you go to paint them you know flip it back over shake them up the cap should open right up you should have no problem they should probably last forever and uh, at this point 50 years I guess is forever it's still younger than me 
but um, it, it's terrific stuff. So, yes, enamels will last. I'm trying to find an old 50-year-old lacquer jar. I'm trying now to find uh, who had one back then, but I'm guessing it's going to be a car paint, uh, not a hobby paint. But anyway, guys, that's the test. Um, there is a giveaway, as you've seen in the thumb. And uh, let's scan this out a little bit. Make room for a little bit of show and tell. I got two of these. This one is still sealed. This is that uh, Hobby Mio spray paint system. Um, because I got two of these, I am going to give this one away. And um, in the, just make sure you like the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And leave a comment below because I'm going to use a comment scanner to uh, randomly pick a winner and ship this baby out. Um, I'll have a winner in about a week. I'll notify you by email that you've won, and then uh, we'll go through the details from there. So that's the giveaway for today. And um, one more thing. Here it is brush painted. This is the old 50-year-old one. I brushed it on, and uh, it brushed pretty nice. Now, metallics, particularly car color metallics, they don't brush well. They're meant to be sprayed, but um, you're going to need at least two or three coats so you can get rid of the brush strokes. But I wanted to show you that it brushed on really nice. It levels. You can see how glossy it comes out. So I wanted to show you that before it was too late. And let me show you a couple more things that I am working on before I say goodbye. Um, I got a whole lineup of these custom creative uh, solvent paints. These come out of Europe, I believe. But uh, look at the size of these jars. Quite the opposite. So it's baby brother there. Uh, look at this. I, uh, I just thinned it quickly with... Uh, my Air Force dinner, and uh, look, <laughs> look at how beautiful is this. Um, I'm trying to get a color like this for my lineup and my paints, which uh, hopefully will be out in a week or two. Uh, this is, I, I've always loved these bright greens, obnoxious slime-colored greens, and so I'm, that's something I'm working on. But look at the difference from the from the bottle to when you spray it. I mean, it's quite different, you know. Uh, Mamba Green Racing Fluorescent. So I guess this is a fluorescent, but boy, it looks different once it hits the surface. Uh, also, I'm working on the shocker of shockers to me. This is the gr this might be the greatest lineup of acrylics I've ever used. These are by Badger. We'll make my airbrush, several airbrushes, and uh, this was pretty much straight out of the bottle. I think it's straight out of the bottle into my Badger, and look at this. And it it, it doesn't even have that funky. Like it's beating off of the plastic, like it doesn't want to lay down, like in my uh, hotter airbrush acrylics. It literally goes down like a, a solvent. And these are pure water based acrylics. This is uh, Minotaur. This is their Minotaur lineup. What is this called? Scorching Red. Look at this. Just so you can understand what I'm talking about. Reach it behind me, guys. This is it thinned. Look at it, it all ran to the edges. Look at it. It's all spotty. And this is it, unthinned. So as thick as it seemed, it was just right for this airbrush. So Badger meets Badger, and it comes out beautiful. Look at that. So these, I have a whole lineup of these. I might have 40 or 50 of these. So I'm going to be testing these soon because I these could be the best acrylics I've ever tested. And they're cheap, too. They're cheap, meaning three, four bucks, I think, for a nice bottle. So that's something else I am working on. And let me show you a couple of things coming up soon. Check this out. Oh, we lost our uh, Gypsy Avenger here from Pacific Rim. This is my, uh, just came in, an Extreme Patriot. Extreme version of that Patriot. It even says Extreme on it right there. And I'm showing you this now because I'm not going to go through any details yet. It's got the high roller trigger, air adjustment mag valve. It's got a nice anodized uh, body. Look at that. The trigger height difference is unbelievable. Oh, wow, look at that. They say these high roller uh, triggers are easy to handle, so I can't wait to test this. But I'm showing you that because I got a second one, still sealed. I'm going to give this baby away when I do the airbrush test. So uh, hopefully this will be up in a couple weeks, within a couple weeks. So you guys can see the test and have a chance to win one. I'm pretty excited about that. And I just got this in last night. This is a single action Posh 8 Series 
Uh, it's a siphon feed. And um, I was disappointed because I thought it came with glass jars. It doesn't, but I think it has a standard valve with a... I have a bunch of jars that will fit this, which is good news for you guys because it's easy to get and you have a bunch. I think if you just lock it in, you can change the paints quick. And it came with all this, the hose, the cups, two, the, so uh, this is coming up soon too. I've always wanted to test one. They're supposed to be workhorses, particularly for applying primers. So that's coming up soon too. And a uh, couple of new kits. I don't know why I'm showing all this stuff. Check this out. I had to order this from overseas. And um, I'm going to replace the body on my old Celica, which I couldn't find with this body, which is the, the nice hood and whatnot because it's a GT4 version. So it should snap right over my... Uh, Celica GT. Got this beautiful Honda Fireblade bike kit from Tamiya. They make great bike kits. This is an absolute beauty. Tons of Gumpla I haven't even shown yet on camera. Oh, we can't get everybody in here. Got this Batman kit. Look at this. And this guy was hard to find. So uh, shout out to my buddy Walter at Gundam Pros. He uh, it just came in and I told him I wanted one and he sent it out to me quick. So this is quite different for Bandai venturing into these superheroes. I think they're going to do uh, Iron Man. I believe they're going to do a Spider-Man too. Um, that's towards the end of this year. Anyway guys, I'm rambling on. Uh, there you go. That's there's a great paint test and then there's our update as to what's coming up in uh, the, new, the new paints that I'm working on. I'm running out of space in my desk. Everything's tumbling over. But anyway guys, the conclusion is the stuff works great and uh, don't hesitate to buy uh, testers paints I don't know two bucks a jar but uh, hey you double it up with the thinner and you're gonna get double this size so so two bucks and you're really gonna double um, but anyway they last and they stand the test of time anyway guys thanks for sticking to the very end don't forget to like and subscribe leave a comment for a win for a chance to win that uh, hobby Mio spray system and uh, I'm going to have a video up uh, in less than a week. Another video. It'll be one of these tests. Maybe I'll do these Hobby Mio paints that, are, that I just got in. And check this out. Brand new. How rare is this? Two new colors in the super metallic lineup from Mr. Color. This is awesome. Super rich gold and super duralumin. Look at that. That's a great paint lineup. And um, I guess I'll be testing those soon. And I got in the finally the jaw version of the Aqueous. So I leave everything here until I inventory it, and then I write down what we're going to have to test. That's why I always have stuff that's new in front of me, um, just to remind me. I'm getting uh, lost in a sea of paint here. I don't want to don't want to leave anything behind as far as testing goes. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. You guys have a safe, a great week, and uh, we will see you in the next video.